Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Barcelona. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE, here with Dave Vellante, my co-host, extracting the signal from the noise. We got CUBE alumni, CUBE Collective, distinguished analysts uh, with theCUBE. Sarbjeet Joal, who is with Stackplane, founder and principal analyst at Stackplane. Stack Pain. Stack Pain, not, not plain. Plain. Pain. Pain. Pain of glass or yeah. pain. Stack Pain. I feel Stack the pain plain. or pain of glass. Sarbjeet, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, John. Good to hey, see you. Hey, so first Dave. of all, good to see you here in Barcelona. Thanks for coming out and on theCUBE. You have been out and about, been following your Twitter feed. Amazing. Big time, great stuff. You got a lot of notes there. What are you seeing? What's your take of MWC? Bring it home. Yeah, I, I, I've been running around actually since um, uh, Monday morning. Um, great dinner with you guys on Sunday, thank you. Well. So yeah, I think the biggest pattern is that um, telcos are getting digitized for a while now, but, but it's getting even more digitized, right? So this is what my interpretation is. Anything which turns into zeros and ones, um, compute companies, whoever is doing compute today better, they will benefit from that. So cloud will benefit from that because I see cloud as um, industrialization of back-end computing. So the demos at AWS were great. You know, like they are cooking up some next level stuff. Baking Gen, I, Gen AI into the BSS, you know, business sports uh, systems side of things, right? So when people call in, you know, reducing the call volume and, and whatnot. So reducing the cost of cogs, right, if you, for, for telcos, if you will. I mean, the, even on the, on the ORAN side, or the RAN side in this case, uh, they are doing a lot of innovation. So they, they gave us the, the tour of their telco solutions, right? IBM also gave us the, their, you know, uh, what they are doing and with the telcos. So I have seen, you know, I'm, I've visited many telcos. Um, yeah, we, we'll, 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 well jump, well, jump well, into that. Well, let's get into it. You got the analyst notebook segment here. You've been walking around, you got the notes. Um, what are you seeing? What's the, what's the key highlight um, from the IBM and these guys? What are they, what's their big pitch? The, the big pitch is that they, they are helping telcos digitize their stack, go to the next level, Monetization is key for telcos. Telcos, are, we talk about, talk about it all the time, they're, su they're suffering from that, right? So they are helping them build the BSS systems and ancillary businesses. An example I will give you is uh, um, with Vodafone. They did a spin out um, which does um, help the SMB market, you know, Telcos are very good, with, big with SMB, you know, because they serve all <laughs> yeah, these, exactly. you know. Exactly, it's easy to monetize. E easy to monetize. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I, I, the, the one pattern is this, the telcos we know that we have talked about last year as well, the telcos are uh, highly regulated. To innovate, their hands are tied in many ways. They can't keep the data of the user the way the other, the Googles of the world and, and, and Facebooks of the world can, right? So, um, in order to innovate, I think spin-outs is the best strategy and many telcos are doing that, I've seen Who? that. Who's doing spin-out? I, I saw the, the Vodafone, I just gave you an example. So, uh, and, and few others actually, I, I can't uh, bring what it about, what about five, right now. What about 5G, what about 5G? Yeah, we heard, just heard from the guys at Netscout that you know, it was definitely pop, hitting the brakes on 5G worldwide. You know, such, such huge capex and they <laughs> There's a 200, million, 200 billion dollar capex shortfall we saw in the paper in the, the keynotes uh, on on Monday from the European telcos, and so there's layoffs, the, hitting the brakes a little bit because there's no killer app. They really haven't found that that golden vector yet. So wh what have you been hearing in that front? I heard some stories around private networks, uh, spot hospitals, right, <laughs> and stuff like that. So. That, um, the, the key idea behind that is that it, ha it has better economics. You can save a lot, of, lot more money because if, if you are doing 5G through telcos, then you're paying them a lot of money because you're going through their networks. But if you have a private network where you need to keep like 80% of your yeah. communication sort of locally, that makes sense to me. So that's the number one thing I 
So you're saying well, private 5G is the killer app of 5G. <laughs> is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. you can say that, yeah. <laughs> So my big, my big takeaway here is that, that there's no dev talk going on. Like, so um, we heard also from NetScout and others that there's a lot of infrastructure going on, a lot of private 5G, the mobility story between Kindle and HP, I thought it was a great announcement. So you got this idea of seamless mobility between private environments, private AI, public networks for, so you don't lose data if you're on, like got a package on a truck, it can connect up, so I saw that, love yeah, that yeah. trend. Yeah. The other thing I'm seeing is, is that when we had the Broadcom CEO on, the, the, the president, the president. The president, uh, I meant. President. 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 Hot hands of CEO. <laughs> that the architectures for service providers are changing into clusters, not so much data centers. They're turning into like super clusters. He actually used that term, Charlie Quas at, at, at Broadcom. So that's one. And then the other one is, is that who writes the apps? So you got open, you got the open model, okay, Linux Foundation. They're trying to create an open system with a telco API. We had the, the chief technologist from AWS on said, the telco should be an API like the data was an API. He was very optimistic now, about I then, happening. I then build, said, is it Build the API and they will come, was his philosophy. But well, I, I then it. said, well, I, well, I said, well, where's the develop, where's the API? Said, well, it's in a reference implementation. It'll well, all happen. Well, Dave, yeah, but, but well, I, I, where we, is it? When we hear reference implementation, what does that mean? We hear what? When we hear reference implementation. Oh, it's like a reference that, architecture. Yeah. What, what does that mean? It means uh, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Uh, yeah. uh, it's getting, getting ready. Like, it, it will take a while for this old industry to adapt, right? Like, we have to give them some time. Last year, remember, we laughed at two APIs? Uh, yeah, 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 GSMA right. said, like, oh, we have launched this open right. API, you know, like, for telcos, and they had two APIs. And this year, it's like 99, I think, total. Yep. yep. So, so that's th a start, right? I mean, it's a good okay. start, yeah. And, yeah, another pattern is that... Next comes the apps. Yeah. Well, how many apps are we talking here? That would, that's what things, Subji. Last year was two, this year it's 99, maybe next year it'll be, we'll hear about the apps. Yes. Well, the Open Gateway I mean, Initiative, I, I want to hear more. I want to see the Open Gateway Initiative yes. be successful. Okay, they had 40, 47 mobile operators, okay, that represent 237 mobile networks, including a lot of the MVNOs. So, so if they get those networks connected, then you open yep. up observability data for NetScout, you open up app developers in the cloud already, because the problem that the telcos have, Dave, and the enterprises is that, we know this, the developers got to come from the consumer side, not the business side, because 5G slicing is not available yet. So, that's... Charlie Kawas made that point too. So, it all happened in the consumer market first. He was talking about AI, but he's yeah. right. So, he's Amazon right. and Azure, mainly Amazon, Azure can reap some wars for sure, because the developers in the cloud will make it happen, because that's where the agility is, that's the speed time in the market. If the telcos could make their stuff compatible with all the table stakes needed for cross-cloud, super-cloud observability, then you're going to have a winning hand. Otherwise, if not, the developer apps will be like, mm, proprietary for this network, for that environment. No, it's all, I think it's all great to dream about big things, and, <laughs> but, but remember this one thing, the telcos is a utility. <laughs> Telco is a utility, you know, just like electricity is. That's how it's uh, like marked in, in government uh, regulators, yeah. you know, that's how they see it. The reason is, because everybody has a right to telco, if you will. So they have to serve the population of their countries, the whole world, in eight, getting nine billion people now, right? So, Okay, so I'm, I'm dreaming then. Nine yeah. billion people, <laughs> oh, no, so no, but five but, billion but, connected. But look, my dream is the vision, obviously, but let's take this to the telcos. That utility provides that today. What, ha what needs to happen next? What needs to happen next is they need to provide that utility on top of that because they're serving two sides, right? They're serving the, the population, everybody, right? Masses and also the smaller and medium businesses and also like big businesses in, in like a, in a minor way, I think, personally. I think biz businesses um, sort of um, use the bigger networks, or networks which are owned by Google and... Yeah, so you, you say, know. so they're serving the, you said they're serving businesses in a kind of minor way, meaning the cloud guys are serving businesses directly. Exactly. The telcos are maybe serving some small businesses and obviously homes, and, and, and of course they're serving 
the OTT vendors and the cloud vendors who are riding on top of their network. I think the key is the collaboration. Anybody who's collaborating with the likes of Amazon, likes of uh, VMware, likes of Microsoft, I think they, those telcos are doing good and they will do better, I think, going forward. Because they can, uh, I used to work at Visa. Visa is also kind of utility, but, but, but even, the telcos are even sort of lower level utility, if you will. So they had to work with all the banks all over the world and we had to go to, with the lowest common denominator in technology stack, right? So the good thing is that, that, that telcos are localized by the country and they're their economics, telco's economics sort of mimics the economics of the country, if you will, right? So, of the population. Another pattern is... So uh, you think, you see that as a positive? Yeah, right. As a, so, yeah. But it's, it sounds like the European telco CEOs are you know, pushing for more consolidation. You would think they would want to buy up some of those local, you know, because I, I, in part I see, I see what you're saying, but isn't it also, doesn't it make that telco more insular, more of a local monopoly, less innovation, less ability to scale. So I mean, I think that's two-sided there. Yeah, telcos also go into this national security kind of aspect, you know, like the calls need to stay within the country, but now we, with the roaming and all that stuff, the calls are, that, that's, that was one of the demo AWS showed, like if, if I'm call, making a call to you here, it has to go to US network and come back to you here. The data travels there, because everything is data now, calls are data. So, but they are trying to route the call from the local, um, uh, sort of right from here, so you, you, we can talk, it doesn't hit US, it, you don't pay more for that network, so, for example. You know, you remind me of something, we didn't talk about this with Zias yesterday, but in the Chuck Robbins round table, he said, oh, I'm not trying to get political, but if Trump gets elected and he implements some of the things that he wants to implement in terms of you know, local restrictions, that's going to be a nightmare for the entire industry to be able to figure out from a compliance standpoint. Um, and I don't understand if, what he means by that. Yeah, well he was saying that, well I guess, I guess Trump's been saying, I don't really completely understand it either, but I guess he's been saying that, that, that if he comes in, he's going to place more restrictions, export restrictions and the like, and sovereignty, data sovereignty, you know, restrictions would likely be the reciprocal, you know, response and that would just make it really hard for companies to figure out what they can and can't do and they have to comply to that, that's an expense, and it's one that he clearly didn't want to absorb. Irrespective yeah. of the politics of it, was his point. But he brought it up several times. Yeah. So <laughs> then, I just wait four years until he's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, my question was, and I didn't get an answer to it, was can that happen with an executive order? But I don't know, sorry, I digress. No, no, another, another pattern That's a rant, is, Dave, for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, right, so there you go. I think you understand the complexity of the situation. We have to understand the bigger patterns, right? The, another big pattern is this, that the telcos, um, again, we talked about earlier, they, they serve the regions or the countries, right? But likes of AWS, likes of Google, likes of you know, Microsoft, they are uh, global companies. So Microsoft serves like, you know, 99% of the globe, right? But a telco cannot. So yeah. that is the, that's the trick, well, that's why they can't innovate. The utility side plus that point, I think is a big, right. big point. Exactly the point I was saying before is that they're localized, right? Yeah, they're restricted yeah. from doing well, there'll borders. definitely be opportunities for them to leverage uh, Amazon to leverage them because when they want to come down to the local zones and local regions, they're okay. going to segment the market. Okay, but, but the big telcos in the United States can, in theory anyway, they can certainly be pan North America or pan America. Uh, can they be global? Sort of. There's certainly no restriction from them competing globally. They're just not in their DNA. Yeah, actually the DT serves, like DT was, went to US and they bought T-Mobile, right? Yeah. That's Telecom, right? And then things are there. If, if your country is friendlier with the other country or your region, EU is friendly with the US, for example, right? Then you can do these things. Well, that was one of my, my, my questions for AWS folks yesterday. They were, or uh, day for yesterday, they were bragging about, oh, the, your call doesn't have to go all the US to US and you can just talk here. It's like, no, no, no. Not if the country is Iran and US. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, right? Yeah, right. So there are still like boundaries. You know what else struck me? We haven't talked much about it. We talked a little bit, but, but the, the whole, uh, perception of this at the show 
and the presence of companies from China, startups, the booths in, from many of the Chinese companies, uh, China Mobile, obviously big keynote speaker, Huawei's huge, huge presence at this show. Um, the, the world sees China differently <laughs> you know, outside of the United States, and it's, they're really a major innovator here. They're driving, whether it's private 5G, ORAN, AI, I mean, it's just amazing the innovation that you see and some of the biggest booths that we see here and startups, you were saying Hall 8 is full of startups as well. Yeah, actually. A lot of them I would imagine are from China. Yeah, there, there are a lot, uh, I saw less Chinese, but a lot uh, from other parts of Asia uh -huh. um, and uh, Latin America because it's the way we are sitting kind of thing, right? And, 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 and of course Spain, um, and you, many U.S. companies were there. Uh, I met the, the, the guy from Stanford who was presenting, you must have seen my tweets, right? Like they were yeah. presenting the, how telcos can help the hospitals and all that stuff. So they were, that was a great panel. They were, I, I, I was there for a couple of, uh, of those sessions. The, the long story short, if you go to, okay, last year I wanted to go to a Hall 8, I couldn't make it because I got busy in these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> huge, folks, like if you're here, um, if, if you're not here, it, it's, you can't guess how big this show is. Explain the order of magnitude, just give a taste. It, it's 95,000 people, we are told, but it's not the people, it's the, how big the booths are and how the halls are laid out. Laid out. So there's hall one, two, three, and then four and five are parallel, and this is the hallway in and between those. And there's upstairs, just downstairs. And upstairs and downstairs as well. Okay, the best way to get next, if, if you're first time here, you will make this mistake, which I made last year. Like, I was like walking around like downstairs, like to go from hall one to four. No, 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 don't do that. Go upstairs, and it's much easier to Quieter, walk, walk yeah, through. Right. Yeah, it's because it, less people, a little less. Upstairs is the meeting rooms, but there are upstairs, um, Salesforce has a big presence upstairs, and, and, and um, um, ServiceNow has a big, you know, long. You I, know, heard, I heard someone say yesterday, <laughs> it feels like going to Costco on a busy Saturday. The, the difference here too is like, but, but if you remember, I didn't go to CES, but I imagine it's spread out all over Las Vegas yeah. in different hotels, and you, it makes it even harder. Here, at least everything's connected. It is It's here. like the Hanover in, in uh, Hanover Yeah, Fair. Hall 8 is like uh, four years from now. Yeah. It's all startups. It's, it's called 4YFN. And everywhere, like, I, I knew that there are startups in, in, in number eight, but when I saw 4YFN, I was like, what the heck is that? So and I'm I asked many people, they couldn't tell. It's so four years from now. I know, I, I, that was, <laughs> by the way, I, I want to see that, by the way. Thanks for you putting that. Yeah. I want to check it out. I want to get your thoughts on a tweet you said earlier. So a couple of hours ago, you just did the whole tour with ADRS, which you mentioned earlier. Here's your tweet, your point of view. Public cloud has just started to flirt with telcos, comma. There's a lot more to come in the few months and years. Okay, you mentioned the zeros and ones. What do you mean by the flirting? Because that's the story here that I'm seeing is that this has become a cloud data show. Yes. Cloud in the sense of distributed computing, architectures are coming to telco. Telcos are still in charge with their value proposition, hence their position, as you pointed out, as a utility, but they got data. So now that the clouds are coming into the scene, what specifically do you see in terms of the cloud telco relationship? What, how would you like, Describe that. Are they buddy buddies? Are they shaking hands? Are they staring at each other? Are they dancing? I mean, what's the partnership <laughs> with the clouds and the telcos? How would you describe um, the current vibe? Yeah, I um, think the current vibe is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being polite. Do they hate each other or do they love each other? Uh, they are dating each other right now. <laughs> so they're kind of flirting. They haven't dating, kissed like each other yet, they're, but they're, they're still dating. <laughs> yeah, they're like this, you know, like a, they're, they're <laughs> assessing each other's like, okay, where should we, um, can we get together? And you do can't something? blame them. You can't blame the telcos. Yeah. Right? right? Okay, so what, what, what do you think it goes next? Is it a good date? They go on a follow on date? They're going to go steady? What's yeah, the, I, think, the, I, th I think they yeah. have to because of the, the nature of the beast, because things are, all these communications are zeros and ones now. They have to do it that way. They can, they can do on their own. They can, they can try to innovate their own, but because they are all segregated, they cannot innovate at the pace where big tech can. So for that reason, they have to go to big tech. In this case, because they need yeah. networks, they, a lot of data is involved, a lot of compute is involved. Yeah. The amount of compute involved in, in, in these you know, telcos, uh, routing calls, uh, sending calls, voicemail, all that stuff is, is huge. You have, yeah. a, you have a pin tweet 
on the 23rd of February when um, NVIDIA hit two trillion. Uh, a lot of talk about where do they go from here? Is this a bubble? Is it going to burst? Does NVIDIA have you know, a long runway? Are they going to get disrupted by all these other companies, be it the hyperscalers or other firms that are building GPUs, LPUs, other specialized PUs? What are your thoughts on NVIDIA's uh, sustainability of NVIDIA's current moat? I think their sustainability is better than what normally what people think. The reason being that developers are with them for all these like, you know, 15 plus years. Jensen says 30 years, but I think like, like just, you know, that's too much. 15 years is even a lot of time, right? Another thing what Jensen said when he was talking to John Ford of CNBC, actually I did a dissection so, of that video, right? Yeah. I, he I is that. going into the next business models. He is super clever, super smart guy. He's telling his story that, hey, we, we can sustain this growth, growth going forward, right? So the key thing what he said was, all the, all the GPUs which are out in the market, it can be two years old, three years old, four years old, or the new, you know, H100s or all the, the all current, the, current training yeah. GPUs. Yes. So if you, you can train, you can do the same thing what you can do on today's GPU on three years old, four years old, five year old GPU, but it will run slow, but it, you can do the same thing. That is huge because any developer sitting in, in sort of a small town of India or in Africa or, or any, any part of the world, they can play with that innovation. And uh, they can do experimentation. It's not like only the rich people or the rich countries can do this. And the point is that today's training GPUs become tomorrow's inference GPUs. Exactly. And yeah. that is a depreciated asset on the books. Now, Charlie Kawas, I learned today is, yeah, but the problem they'll have is energy efficiency. Yeah. So that, that could be a wild card. I, I, I'd like to come back with that and see what Jensen would say at GTC in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Are you coming yeah. there? We'll be there, uh, yeah. 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 So you're local, so you will be there for sure. Of course, I'll so, definitely yeah. be there. No, you won't be there. No? You'll be in Paris. Oh, dang it. Am I? KubeCon. <laughs> Oh, I guess all of them. in Paris for CNCF. Plus, I'd go to Paris. You go to GTC. Actually, I'd like to go to the GTC. <laughs> no, I love I, I've never missed a KubeCon. Oh, cool. So, so thanks so much for coming on. Uh, where can people get a hold of you if they want to engage with you? Um, Stack Pain, you're doing a lot of great research. I love when we do the research analyst notebook segment. You go where you get all your notes. Um, you're always scouring and turning over rocks and, and, and connecting the dots. We really appreciate you involved in our Cube Collective. Where can people um, get involved with you and, and touch base and engage? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I appreciate you, what you guys do, you know, because our, our thinking um, uh, sort of matches. Some people think I'm part of the Cube. I'm like business, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just love what they do and. You're like, in the Cube Collective, so you're, in the, fam you're in the family as far as we're concerned. We're in the family, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, they, people can get to me on Twitter. I live on Twitter. I, like, I mean, I tweet like, I don't know, 100 times a day. <laughs> and I, that's why idea cap. Uh, we like got to get your Twitter handle up there. Uh, sort of so it's, it's, all, it's, yes. it's just last name. First, first, name, name, last first name, last name, at, at, at on the at, Twitter handle. At Twitter, yes. And uh, LinkedIn is there as well. Uh, email sjohal at stackpain.com is there. Yep. So, yep. Uh, I'm here to help anybody who wants to understand. Like, yeah. uh, but you're the engaged with customers. Stack. And I also am a student of it, you know, so I yeah. love these discussions. Anyone out there looking for a transformation call, Sarbjeet, he's been a cloud architect, he's been an old school app developer, um, he's also an influencer now online because he's prolific, but he sees the big picture and, and he sees the cloud uh, collision with telco, he sees the cloud collision with, with new, the new apps and the super cloud, so always a great resource to tap. Appreciate your, your contribution to theCUBE and we, Rick, we really value your presence and friendship. Thank you for for being part of the cube. Thank you. Thank you to the, all the brands I have worked with. You know, <laughs> VMware, Oracle, <laughs> EMC, Visa. You know, all these uh, commerce one, the the, the, the dot com darling. You know, I've learned a lot from those. <laughs> yeah. um, the dot com dolly. Yeah. yeah, we've seen this movie before. And <laughs> great job. Thanks, sir. Okay, we're back with more live coverage. We are in the Cube's Barcelona studio here in Spain. Instructing the Silver I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Mm -hmm.